Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to be looking at basic examples of multiplying expressions. And as a teaching tool throughout this video, I'm going to refer back to numbers. But if you see something like this, 2x times, I don't know, let's make it up, 4 plus 3x. Well, I'm going to use examples and numbers to help you make sense of how this really works. But you should also know that there are great visual models to understand all of these multiplication processes. And I might look at those in other videos, but here I just want to let you know that there is a visual reasoning behind this as well, but I'm going to focus more on numerical reasoning. So first of all, what does this even mean? Well, this means that you have this term, this number right here, this represents some value. And it's telling us to take that value, right, and then multiply it by all this stuff in here. This is another value. And how do you know that? Well, this is algebra, right? And this term, a term is two things combined by multiplication, is being multiplied by this group of terms in here. And you can tell because these parentheses are put here. And whenever you see that, that means multiply. So the first thing that really comes to mind when I see this is my old friend, the distributive property. Now this property is very helpful and very logical. It's not something you, you should just memorize. What does it really say? Well, again, I, I said I was going to use numbers, so let me, let me use some numbers here. Let's say we have the number 12, and I want to multiply it by, I don't know, something like 10, right? Well, how do you usually do this? Well, I would take 12 multiplied by 10. You might have this memorized and realize that's 120. But what you might start to do is break these things apart. What if I thought of 12 times 10 as 12 times, I don't know, 4 plus 6, right? Just break the number apart. The distributive property tells us that if you take the 12 and multiply it by the 4, that gives you 48, right? And then you multiply it by 6, well, that gives you, um, excuse me, <laughs> that gives you 72, right? And you add these two up, what is that? Well, 40 and 70, that's, that's 110 plus another 8 and 2 is another 10, that's 120. So the distributive property says, okay, you can take a number, you can break it in pieces, like 10. We broke it into 4 and 6. But when you multiply it by 12, multiply it by all the pieces and then add it up. This is called using the distributive property of multiplication, right, because we're multiplying the two values, over addition, because you're adding the pieces you've created from the 10. And you should know the answer shouldn't change. And this is analogous to something like this. If you wrote out, you might be familiar with this format, 12 times, right, 10. Well, what you're really doing in this algorithm, when you say 0 times 2 and 0 times 1, times 1, you get zeros and then put a 0 here, and 1 times 2 and 1 times 1. Well, what you're really doing, when you do 1 times 2 and 1 times 1 and 0, you're multiplying all the parts. This is the distributive property, right? You can especially see it here. When you take that... 1 from the 10, right, you're thinking of 10 as 10 and, and nothing else, multiplying it by the 2 and then the 1, well, you're splitting the 12 into 10 and 2. And then you're multiplying the 10 by both of those parts. This is the same thing here and here. This is all connected. So really, we're going to use the same process. We're going to take the number on the outside, just like we did here, multiply it by our two parts, and then try and add them up if we can. And in fact, you can think of this example as, as an interpretation of this, right? Instead of 12, you can think of that as two, right? Times a number. And then you have four plus, well, three times another number, y, right? So here, actually, x and y can't be the same thing, but three times two, if y is two, that's, that's six, and plus four, and then two times six is 12. So this expression connects to this one. So the only thing I should fix, though, of course, is I should make this a y right here. And then we'll look at that. So that's a y, right? What do we do? Well, just like we did before, the distributive property, we have 2x times 4. And what's that? Well, that's going to be 2x times 4, right like this. That will be 8x's. You can think about what that means. This is four groups of 2x's. Altogether, you have 8x's, right? Four groups of 2 is 8. And then 2x times 3y. 
So we're adding that to 2x times 3y. Now this is 2 times 3, which is 6, and then x times y, which is still xy. And that would be as far as you can simplify, right? These are not like terms. x and y and x, we don't really know what they are. So we can't really continue. Now, I said here, of course, I'm going to refer constantly back to numbers to understand what's happening. And I'm going to do that right here. Let's see if I can remember what all this is. So it's 2x times 4 plus 3y. So 2x times 4 plus 3y. I just want to go over some basic points of confusion. Here, 2x and 4. Why is that 8x? And then 2x times 3y. Why is that 6xy? Right? And then how come we can't combine them? So we'll look at those three things. So first, 2x times 4. What is that? Well, this right here, 2 times x means x plus x. Right? That's 2x's. You're multiplying all of this by 4. That's telling you you have four groups of this. So you have an x plus an x, an x plus an x, an x plus an x, and so forth. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 groups of 2x. How many x's is that? Well, that's 8x's, right? And a shortcut for this is to multiply 4 by 2 and get 8. Now, with numbers as well, sometimes students ask, well, do you multiply the 4 by the 2 and by the x? Well, let's refer back to numbers, right? 2x can be thought of as, with our example before, and you can make this up, 2 times 6, which is, we're making that up, and that equals 12, right? And we can think of 4 as 4. So if you're taking 2 times 6 and you're multiplying that by 4, what would you do? Well, in this case, I would just do in any order, right? 2 times 6 is 12 times 4 is, is 48. Notice I only use that 4 once because we're multiplying all these pairs right here, these numbers. So you're only going to multiply once. The same thing is true with 2x times 4. Right? 2x can be thought of as 2 times 6. So just like with the numbers, we multiply 4 by 2. We don't also multiply it by 6. We just multiply right across. The same thing's true here. 4 times 2, and we're done. It's 8x. Next, the, the common question, and it builds right off this example right here, is when you multiply 2x and 3y, how come you don't multiply the 2 by 3 and y and then the x by 3 and y? How come you can only think of it as 2 times 3 and x times y and you're done? Well, again, I'm going to refer back to numbers here. Let's change colors. If 2x is equal to 2 times 6, right, and 3y is equal to 3 times 2, and we're just making up the values of x and y, then you're really multiplying 12 by 6, right? And if you multiply 12 times 6, you should get 72. So here, when we multiply 2 times 6 times 3 times 2, we can do this in any order. But once you multiply 2 by 6 and get 12, and then triple it to get 36, and then double it to get 72, you're done. Right? That's the idea of multiplication. You don't keep reapplying these numbers over and over again. So the question is, how do you represent this in algebra? Well, we don't know what x is, technically. right? It could be 6. It could be anything. So here, instead of a 6, we put an x. And here, instead of a 2, we put a y. So that says 2, and I'll write it up here, 2x, 2 times x, and then 3 times y. Well, we can multiply in any order. And that's where this comes in over here. We choose to multiply the 3 and the 2 because we can. They're both numbers. And we, we typically write that first as a coefficient. And then we multiply the x and the y. Right? It just looks nice and neat. You could write it like this right here. But why not simplify it? Why not get rid of these number pairs and combine them into one product? That's what we're doing. And then x and y, we're just writing those as x and y. So that's basically, you know, when you're multiplying these terms, a shortcut is to say, okay, if the variables are different, we're just going to write them out. So it's going to be x times y, and we're done. And if there's coefficients there, the numbers, right, 3 times 2 is 6, and we're done. But also there's this idea behind it. Uh, about what you can and can't multiply and how many times you multiply. And if you're feeling lost, try some numbers. If you took the 2 and multiplied it by 3 to get 6, and then took the 2 and multiplied it by y to get 2y, right? Then you multiply the x by 3 to get 3x, and then the x by y to get xy. You get this really long, ugly term right here. Well, if, you, if you're correct, if this is right what you're doing, 
um, you should be able to plug in a number here, and that would match, right? That would match here, this original term. So if you plug in 2 times something, and then 4 plus 3 times something, these things would equal. But you'll find they won't. This is incorrect. Now, why can't you simplify? Well, any further, right? You could do 2x times 4 plus 3y. Well, again, we got 8x, right, plus 6y. 6xy, oh boy, plus 6xy. Okay, well you can't simplify any further, and you might have heard this many times, but because you don't know what x and y are. So there might be cases where you could just combine these into, and I think usually the temptation is something like this, 14xy, right, to try and combine them. There might be cases where it is equal, but since it's not always equal, we don't do it, right? Let me show you what I mean. Um, let's let's just make up values for x and y. So x equals 1 and y equals 2. Again, we don't know what these things are. So if this was correct, right, that means you're saying they're equal. And if they're equal, we can plug these numbers into both expressions and we'll get the same result. Let's see what happens. So 14 times 1, x, times 2, y, we get 28. Okay, so here what do we get? 8 times 1, plus 6 times 1 times 2. That's 8 plus 12, which is 20. But 20 doesn't equal 28. So you see that these things, right, if you simplify it in some weird way like this, or try and combine these non-like terms, you're really changing the way the problem works, and, and you're changing what it says. So that's some ideas behind it. Let me work through a couple more examples so you can really get a sense of how this works. So we actually started off with 2x, right? times 4 plus 3y, but I wrote 3x, I think, to begin. Let's see what happens if that if that's our problem. Well, here we're going to get 8x, and then we're going to get, well, 6x times x. Now, if we simplify that, which we should, we get 8x plus 6x squared, because, you know, the definition of something times it's itself is squared. And here, just to be careful, if you're plugging numbers into this, that means you take the number x, let's say 2, or whatever you plug in, you square that first, and then you multiply it by 6. So this would end up being 6 times 4, right? Not, as some people do, 6 times 2 and then square it, right? This exponent applies only to the variable that it's stuck next to. So that's that example. Let's try some more. What if we had something a little bit less friendly, like 2xy times 4 x plus 2y. Well here, you know, things are getting a little bit longer, but this is still a value. Here we multiply 2xy by 4x, multiply those coefficients to get 8. And x times an x is x squared. And the y is not being multiplied by anything else, so it's still just there. So it's 8 times x squared times y. And then here we have 2 times 2, which is 4 x is, is still just kind of sitting there, and then y times y is y squared. And we're done. We really can't simplify this any further. Let's try some more. What if we have, I don't know, 3abc times 2ab minus 4b. What's this going to equal? Well, here the new thing that we're introducing is this negative sign. So when we take 3abc times 2ab, Right? If we wrote it out, we get 3abc times 2ab. I'm going to keep going. And then we're subtracting, so it's a minus sign here, Right, 3abc times 4b. And if you're not comfortable keeping track of that negative sign there or thinking of it as negative, um, you could rewrite this as plus a negative 4b. That won't change anything in the end. But I just want to point that out, that you don't want to lose track of that negative sign. So now we're going to rearrange. 3 times 2 is 6. A times A is A squared. B times B is B squared. And C is all by itself there. We subtract 3 times 4, which is 12. A is all by itself. B times B is B squared. And C is right there. So we were done with that one. Let's try another one. Negative 14, I don't know, RST times negative r, right, minus, I don't know, 
3s. How would we handle this one? Well, now we're starting with a negative term. We're multiplying it by a negative r. So here, and this is, you know, this goes back to that source of confusion before. When you have negative times a negative, it, okay, it's a positive, right? And it is a positive, but sometimes students get confused because this negative r, they think of it somehow multiplying by all these parts. And they're not, they're not sure about what the sign should be. Just try to remember that this right here, right, this is a negative value. And this is a negative value. And you're multiplying two negative values. So that ultimately will be positive. Then I, I, would, I would establish that and then move on. Because now you're getting 14 r squared, right, because it's multiplying two r's, and then st. And now we're subtracting 3s. So you, you might want to think of that as adding a negative 3s. So here we're going to add, oops, my, that looks like a t right there. I'll write my plus sign nice and big. Plus, put parentheses here, I don't want to confuse the plus sign with the t. Plus what? Well, again, we have a negative times a negative, so it's going to be a positive. 14 times 3 is 42. And then r, all by itself, s squared and t. And we're done. So I think, you know, the, the biggest source of confusion is how to multiply these things. And, and one thing you get used to is, you know, whenever you're multiplying, like in this example, really one thing you can focus on is the coefficients. And then if the variables are doubled, right, it becomes that variable squared. If they're all by themselves, they don't really change. Let's try one more example for fun. So let's say I had, I don't know, 4 a, oops, that's sloppy, 4 a squared b c squared times negative 7, I don't know, x a b squared um, minus 2 c cubed. There we go. Actually, let's add a fraction in there. Let's say 2 thirds a to the 1 half c cubed. There we go. So what's going to happen now? Well, our first term is a positive, so I keep track of that. We're multiplying it by a negative term, and then here I'm going to think of this as a negative term, and if that's not clear, rewrite it, at, rewrite it as adding a negative term. So before I really get into the, the details of this, I start off with a positive term. Did I say negative before? Sorry. This is a positive, right, times a negative, and then we're going to add, all right, so we have another negative. So positive times a negative, and then a positive times a negative. So our final term, or whatever it's going to be, it's going to be some negative value plus some other negative value, right? Because a positive times a negative is a negative in both cases. Here we have 4 times 7, so that's 28. a squared times a is a to the third power. b times b squared is b to the third power. c squared is all by itself. And then there's an x. And there we go. And now in this next term, a little bit less friendly, but we can handle it. 2 thirds times 4 is what? Well, 2 times 4 is 8. And the third, we're counting thirds, so it's 8 thirds. A, t a to the 1 half power times a squared. Well, remember, when you're multiplying these, one thing you're really doing is adding the exponents. So you can think of this as a to the, to the 2 and 1 half power, right up here, a to the 2 and 1 half power. But we want to simplify 2 and a half into an improper fraction, so it'll be a to the 3 halves power, right? 2 times 2 is, is 4, oh, a to the 5 halves, sorry. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so it's 5 halves. So here, a to the 5 halves, right? Oops. a to the 5 halves power. And then b is, you know, has nothing to multiply it by. And then c squared times c to the third is c to the fifth. All right. So those are some introductory level problems. In the next video, we'll, we'll, we'll spice it up a little bit. Thanks.